Hi, my name is Joe. So three years ago, I made a multiple six-figure loan to my best friend. Oh, boy. <laughs> and uh, it was on the pretense I was on a handshake that he would need it for five months to complete 16 homes that he was building. And uh, he really came to me begging, and uh, he was in a bad way. And, you know, he had really taken me along in this faith, and I just thought he was a stand-up person. So I gave it the loan for five months. And um, I gave no collateral or there was no contract. And so for three years, it was kind of this back and forth. Um, you know, I went through all types of range of emotions. And it culminated last Tuesday. I finally had to sue the guy. And uh, when we went to serve him the papers, he was on a two-week vacation. And uh, then finally, when he got back and they served the papers, turned out he actually claimed me in the bankruptcy, which he swore he would never do. Mm -hmm. So I just about lost it, you know? And um, so now it's just a reality. I mean, basically, the money's gone. So. What is, the, what is your current inner experience having to do with all that's happened? Like I said, I can go one way or I can go the other way. Yeah. I mean, so anger? Absolutely. Yeah. Hurt? Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing is I have to take a job now that doing something I would never do in my life. I work construction now, just trying yeah. to pay the bills. Yeah. So every day I lace up those boots to go to work every day. You know, I'm lacing my boots up with tears in my eyes. I hear you. You know, I come home and I got, I got, you know, blisters on my hands. Well, and part of what I hear you saying, that perhaps the worst part about it, and you tell me if this is accurate, is the betrayal, the sense of betrayal. Yeah, because it's like I could go throughout my day and I could be happy not thinking about it, but then the second it, you know, I realize the reality of my situation yeah. or the first of the month, you know. I start having thoughts. Yeah. Thoughts like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I get some of those thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> which are understandable. Which are very understandable. So, so what really is your intention here this evening? Are you looking inside yourself or a way to find peace with this? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I know the real thing I need to do is just look at making more money, and I understand that. But, you know, I, I well, beat myself up a lot. Uh, and, um, and, and, are, and when you're in that mode, what are the kinds of things you tell yourself? Uh, you're an idiot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, what's wrong with you? How could you have done this? See, now what you've done is you've internalized the same process. You're no longer just making him wrong. Now you're making yourself wrong. So now you've got two people that you're judging and condemning and making wrong. The more people we make wrong in our lives, the more pain and suffering we will have. I can't emphasize that too strongly. The more we make people wrong, who are in our lives, the more pain and suffering we will have. Because um, I think it was uh, one of Buddha's quotes was like, uh, being angry at someone who did something wrong is like holding a hot rock, getting ready to throw it at them. In the meantime, you get burned. So you've got yourself in a position where you, you really can't go anywhere as long as you insist on being in the wrong-making business. I suspect the day you made the loan, you didn't get up that morning thinking, let's see how much of an idiot I could be today. It seemed like a good idea at the time. So you had a positive intention. You thought you were helping out somebody. It just didn't turn out that way. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, what you're doing now is you're compounding the thing day by day by day by day. 
because you've not found a way to let go of it. So how so, do you do that? <laughs> so the way you do that is, can you have compassion for the Joe who thought he was really doing a worthwhile thing, trying to help somebody, and it just didn't turn out that way? Can you have compassion for that Joe? Yes. See, if you can have compassion for that Joe, then the forgiveness would be something like, I forgive myself for judging this guy, and I forgive myself for judging myself as stupid, untrustworthy, um, whatever words you would put on it. It's a, it's a letting go process. It's a letting go of the judgment process. You can't change what happened. All you can do is you can let go of that which you're hold, the hot rock you're holding on to. And just, you just put it down. Think of yourself as a piece of wood. And somehow you've got about 10 strings and someone has uh, dragged that piece of wood down into a body of water and tied it to a rock or something down below. And it's just staying there because it's being held down, but that's not its natural state. And you come along with something like a tool like self-forgiveness, and you cut a string. And to that degree, you float up slightly. When you cut the last string, you soar up. So I got to get a pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> A well, pair of cosmic scissors. <laughs> right. And really, and really, compassion, self-forgiveness is that pair of scissors. See, See because uh, you know, if we take this a little bit further, you you mentioned this as betrayal. You know a, that you experienced his actions as actions of betrayal, and what I also hear you uh, indicating is that you betrayed yourself, uh, in a sense, because your discernment wasn't really operating, and you didn't take care of yourself in the process of making the loan. Hmm. And, and so through the process of compassion and self-forgiveness, not only do you dissolve the judgment, but you can dissolve the betrayal. Uh, most of us have experienced betrayal in our, in our lives, but I would suspect that you've had other experiences with betrayal. Would that be accurate? Yes. Yeah. See, and so there's, there's an opportunity for you to really utilize this to heal the pattern of betrayal inside yourself. See, and I, I know when I've had experiences of that nature, one of the fastest ways through it that I found was to look at the places in the process where somehow I created, promoted, or allowed what happened where I made choices, where I was complicit in the outcome that occurred. And to look at the different choices I could have made, both inwardly and outwardly, so that I could really learn from the experience. So I encourage you in that regard too, because it can be very liberating for you. But the main thing here is to find compassion for yourself in the mm -hmm. process. And that will free you. And you did say the right thing. You move into acceptance. Yeah. And you just let go of the judgment. The suffering stops at that point. You don't get the money <laughs> for it. <laughs> A wise friend said to us once, don't make loans to anyone of any amount unless you're clear inside yourself that you, that money could be a gift. That if you never saw it again, it'd be a gift and you feel clear about it inside yourself. Yeah. And that guideline has really stayed with me. Anything else, Joe? That's it. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. Thank you very sharing. much.